my father was about to go to Massachusetts. And then Mr. Svensson unexpectedly sold his business and moved out. It sounded like Hans was helping the spirit to cross over. Do we know if that worked? He believes so. He never heard of any other paranormal disturbances after his investigation. Welcome to another edition of Unexplained Cases Live. It's Rick Garner along with Darren Dito, Miriam the Medium, and Alexandra Holzer. Wow, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me, guys. We've been looking forward to this for quite a while and just to be able to talk about, my goodness, uh, I'm sure we could talk for, for hours with your experiences, let alone those of uh, your father, but uh, we'll, we'll slide right into that. I'll let uh, Mr. Dito uh, take over the interrogation. Yeah, I know we've chatted over the years on Facebook and things like that. It's finally uh, awesome to, to see you and, and talk to you. And it looks like your father will be joining us uh, too today. I see him right of behind course. us. Of course. You know, I, I, was, I was thinking about how to ask this, you know, um, when a stockbroker, real estate agent, somebody sells insurance, you know, they come home and go, honey, you would not believe the day that I had. Did your dad ever come home and say, guys, you would not believe what happened to me today? What the heck was it like growing up in the Holzer household? Yeah, no, it, it wasn't um, that typical drama. It was other kinds of drama. So what, what would happen is he, you know, would go about his business. Um, he spent a lot of his time in his uh, office lair, as I'd like to refer to it. And um, you would hear from across the apartment the uh, typing of the Smith Corona typewriter, you know, going at all hours of the day and night. And um, that's really in the phone ringing constantly, you know, the push button phones. And we had, he had four dedicated lines for his own phone. And then my sister had one and then I got one. So we're like, woo. And um, it was very um, phone ringing, typing, typing, and then, you know, answering the door. And that's, that's what it sounded like. And that would be in between him going out and doing some cases, coming back or leaving to film or whatever. So it was like a revolving door where it was just very normal. Right. So, uh, but he never really complained about anything for work. The work was alive in the apartment. That's why I referred to it in my book. Oh, yeah. It's like living in a, in a living uh, rotating museum because the people that he worked with came into our home too. So it was almost like, the work was everywhere and it wasn't so much drama filled. It was actually more creepy because a lot of these people were very spooky looking. Right. You know what I mean? I mean, some people would come in with these interesting outfits or they'd smell kind of like musty, like they were in a museum in a sarcophagus for too long. Like it's oh. just, it's like weird. A joy. weird vibe. Yeah. I mean, they were very into like very mystical. And then you would have other people that were well-known writers or actors too. And they have their own, um, air of existence as well where they have different vibes and energy that's the drama in my house you know as far as the work and then what would happen when he did bring things home and those experiences that i had growing up so and, and i was going to ask you that you you're sensitive and you've kind of uh, carried on with the paranormal uh, torch for the uh, holzer family when when did, was there an instance that you could tell that you had had abilities um, and you're like, oh, I really, I'm really tied into what's going on. Do you, do you remember a specific incident? Yeah, I was a few years old, and um, my mother's mother, my grandmother, Nana, who was Parisian, who was the one married to the Count of Russia, so that's the Buxhoven inside of the family where we're right. blood, and uh, they married into the family of Catherine the Great. So Nana was extremely clairvoyant, and her and my father were very close. And of course, everybody was speaking French. You know, we're European, so German, French, Austrian, all of it in the house growing up. Now, after my parents divorced, Nana was always still there. And she was very close to my family. So it was a really weird situation. So throughout the years, um, she was the one that I would go and, and tell her things because my father was always so busy. And to get his attention back then growing up was really difficult. He was in the height of a lot of work. Imagine. And he was at it long before I was born, you know, but um, so I would have things happen and I would go to my grandmother who knew that I knew things. And it wasn't until years later that my father and I had that conversation where, of course, he wasn't surprised at all. He goes, of course, I know you're psychic. What is wrong with you? It's natural, but you're, you're, you're a very strong psychic. And I just looked at him like, that's it. Whereas Nana was very coddling. She's like, oh, darling, tu es très... Uh, 
pourquoi tu dis ces trois Tu es très heureuse. Tu es... Euh, she's like, you're smart. You know, you're so smart. You know these things. You know? And I'm like, nobody would give me a straight answer. She'd right. be more empathetic to it. But nobody was explaining to me why. That's, you're telling me it's normal because this is the environment, and even including my, my mother's mother living with us half the time. Right. Parents were divorced. It didn't matter. Everybody was still like in this weird psychic world slash ghost hunting world where everybody still came together and it was normal. But if you take that outside the apartment and you apply it to private schools growing up in Manhattan, mm -hmm. it didn't go well. <clears throat> so I, no, was, I, I was like, at, what is it from the Adams family? I was Wednesday. Was that her name? Oh, yeah. It's right. Wednesday exactly. Adams. I swear to God. And, you know, so trying <laughs> growing up with that, yeah, can you curse with your program? Oh, yeah, you can. All right. Yeah, go for it. Okay, awesome. Thank there you. There we go. Yeah. So, I um, got that out of the way. <laughs> that's my yeah. exorcism of today to say the word fuck. Now, yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> so growing up that way, so you take that environment and then you put it into Manhattan's private school, and I was a freak. Nobody really understood me. Nobody knew how to communicate. So I was always uh, pulled into the misfit kids, the ones that were either didn't weren't popular, you know. So oh, for whatever yeah. reason. And that's how that all kind of was for me. So from that environment. Well, that's too bad. Well, now as you got older and, and now you into adulthood, um, you've written a lot of books. You've done investigations uh, your, yourself. Um, mm -hmm. Is it become a passion like your father? I mean, can you tell it all that you're like, well, I really, I'm really into this like he was? No, it's different. Um, I mean, okay. I have, and there's a lot of other books I have on my desktop that I haven't even finished because I have a lot of kids. And that's my priority, to be honest with you. My father mm -hmm. had my sister and I eight years apart in life, and he had a lot of freedom to travel and write and travel and film. I don't have that luxury. Um, we have to work. We have to raise the children. And that's pretty much most of my day. So it takes me longer to get anything out. But what I did do over the years, which is what he used to do, an easy fix for that was to become a quasi journalist and interview people and also write my own articles on subject matters, dealing with the paranormal, the occult, um, men in black, UFOs, the whole thing, and then flip it and actually interview some celebrities um, to, you know, people that have had experiences, pilots, you know, things like that, because right. that was part of what he did. And I found it so easy to do for me. It wasn't, okay. it was a no brainer. So I put a lot of my work into like the Huffington Post, UFO Digest. Yeah, um, I've seen some of your articles, yes. Yeah, so that's, that's how I had, Filled that need to, to get that kind of um, idealism out there and theories and perceptions of the work continuing from my father. But um, my passion has shifted gears and that's because I'm growing up in a different day and age where he grew up in. So I cannot possibly be a carbon copy of that because our environments are very different. What's going on today and even a few years back has really flipped and changed a lot of perceptions for me, including the history that we're taught in school for what our civilizations are, to me, are no longer true. They are falsities, and I feel we have been lied to as a society and culture of where we really come from and who we are and what was here before us and not that long ago. And yeah, it, you know, it goes into maybe mud floods and conspiracies, quote unquote, but they're really not. And um, I've done a lot of time and research. My husband and I have been opened up to this subject matter, which my father would have been very involved with because it deals with Tartaria. Mm. And what does that mean? And other civilizations. And what we refer to, and this is going back into the 50s, um, uh, there have been a lot of interviews of doctors and scientists saying that there have been ancient civilizations before us that predate possibly um, mankind as we know it and who was here before us and other uh, species from other, uh, you know, planets. Like aliens, well. yeah. Okay. Yeah, you know, other other types of species, you know. And so, my father's work um, also dealt with history. You know, uh, he was also a professor for a long time. He was a, an avid collector um, and picked up every single book there was. And he always had this um, issue with how the history has been portrayed, including Columbus, that he was not the first person to discover America and who was here before that. 
And so he had dedicated a lot of books towards certain areas of our world about the history and ancient civilization, which does parlay into the paranormal because you're, you're dealing with other life forms that have been here where we are now and not that long ago, potentially. And that leaves impressions behind, just like a ghost, just like somebody that was here and is no longer here, but is still in that state, occupying that same space because they're trapped right. and can't move on. Other impressions have been left around as well and artifacts and other things like that. So his work today would definitely be parallel to where I'm headed with the work and curiosity of who are we? Mm -hmm. who, who really are we? You know, I mean, it's like, so the passion is there, but it's, it's more of a, um, intelligence questioning quest to to understand who are we as beings instead of trying to figure out is that is that really a ghost what is a ghost Ooh, you know right. I'm scared. we're so beyond that at this point and we need to be because if we keep replaying this over and over again how much more do you need you're going to have skeptics you're going to have um believers and you're going to have people that are fence sitters mm -hmm. at the end of the day you don't always have to have a personal experience to believe you have to open up your mind to the the possibility that things do exist they do happen that you can't always have scientific proof for that you just don't have an explanation for and that goes into another category of unexplained files that mm -hmm. are either this or that but there's no definitive answer to it so that is an acceptance that you can't prove every single thing and that doesn't mean that that every single thing still doesn't exist and that it's not real a lot that's of things a lot of things in the world that we don't know about, you know what I mean? I, I think that's that's very interesting. Um, speaking of your father, I know he's behind you there in that portrait. Uh, passed away, uh, what was it, about 11 years ago, I think it was? Um, yeah, 11 years ago this past April. Oh, wow. And so, um, but he may be gone, but maybe not gone. Tell me a little bit about, there's things that happen in your house and areas where your dad may be kind of still with you guys, I guess, so to speak. Yeah, no, he's, you know, listen, and uh, so many people around the world have had the same experiences where they lose a loved one or somebody close to them in life or even a, a, a pet. And all of a sudden they have a dream about them and they're coming back to show them that they're okay. And, you know, they're running along or somebody visits you in a dream and you're having a conversation and then you wake up like that was so real. It's because it right. is real. Because when, in our subconscious, when we're in our, our REM cycles and we start to go into a heavier sleep, a lot of times the visitations come because they know from where they are to where we are here that that's the best time to have that conversation and to give messages or just to check in or to, to be there and let us know that they're still here. It's just in a different form. You know, right. we're so stuck on the physical. What do you think makes you inside of you? Right. So that right. continues on. And so he um, I think about three days after he had passed, I had my first dream, which I wasn't looking for. At, I was grieving. I didn't even know how to process this information at that point. I had to worry about being a mom, you know, and, and be mm -hmm. happy for them, you know. So and he came to me and he showed me his feet and his beautiful shoes, and they were doing this. And I'm like, I know it's my father, because you know, we're dealing with ESP, right, it's telepathy. We, need, we don't need to communicate in our dreams doing what you and I are doing now. Right. And we use our, our thoughts, and our thoughts project. And it's kind of like when you do a Ouija board. The information's already there. We're just going to project it out for everybody else um, to get the information in real time, but it's already there. And um, so I, I put it together that I had, I had to figure out, which a lot of the times um, the afterlife shows us information that we have to put together like a puzzle and what ends up happening is you have to piece it together they just don't come and tell you everything it doesn't work that way if that was the case psychics would be winning the lottery every other week that's true you have to work at it you have to really put it together and um he used to love dancing back in the day and in manhattan they used to have the big bands playing and he used to sure. love playing and doing the bebop and everything with his lady friends and um so he couldn't dance um, towards the end of his life. He pretty much couldn't walk anymore. And that was one of the biggest problems for my father was he was a mover. He was a shaker, you know, right. and, and especially in Manhattan, you know, he was always out and about, out and about. Yeah. So he was showing me I'm back up and running with my dancing shoes and I am doing okay. And that was three oh, days cool. after he passed. Wow. That is so cool. Wow, that's amazing. And then you said that every once in a while he may nudge a book or something if you're having a yeah, conversation so, about something. So 
you know, it's like, so, so what I was telling you earlier, so in, in our bedroom, my husband had built this really cool wraparound bookcase around the walls. And, you know, he had written 145 books. Plus mm -hmm. he was an avid collector of anything out there published during his time, uh, during his time as well, the predecessors during him and so forth. So we really have this, this huge collection. And there are moments where we'll be having a conversation, whether it's work related. And for us, our work deals with, the environment we're living in with um, being empathetic to it and history and our loved ones and the afterlife and what and all that stuff. So, of course. and we'd be in a, in a conversation and all of a sudden one of his actual books that would correlate to what we're speaking about yet again, you've got to put that together. So first we're like, did you just see that? So like in one instance, my husband who would be on the computer, hears it. I'm over here. I'm seeing it. So the book goes, just wow. out. so the bookcase is like this here's the book is sticking out so i see it and he's like what was that i'm like did you see this no i heard something i said that just pulled out and then we're like well what is it so we, so we're smart enough to know well okay there's a message there that's obviously that what what is right. this we look at the title of the book and we go through it and we're like aha okay so all these things are like a, it's like a treasure hunt for us where we have to kind of figure out why he does what he does when he does it right um and there's other things that are going on over the years where we've actually created a clipboard where we're charting and documenting the noises and the times that it happens and um, actually have our own experiment in our room over the years. So it, it's really bizarre. Wow. It's not, it's not haunted. You know what I mean? It's not haunted. It's, it's, it's just mm -hmm. constant interaction. There's other family members here over the years because we've opened up. Mm hmm avenue to allow everybody in in a positive way and in a safe way because we do have children in the house to communicate with us so sometimes we might get my husband's grandfather or my grandfather who was the the russian without country white russian wow very very well known so all these different energies so the sounds in our room are different sometimes we'll have a very deep sound to a lighter sound and i'm thinking oh that's daddy and then we'd hear a really uh deep ping i'm like oh that's your grandfather because you knew who they were in life or their personalities. Wow. Rick, are you giving me the hook already? I'm just getting started. <laughs> well, see, I knew that would happen, basically. You know, that you, we go down uh, this particular I didn't even get the holder files, but okay, <laughs> that's fine. We can kind of tie, tie that in to where tonight, or, you know, what we're doing as far as uh, our remote viewing. The Morris Jamel Mansion looks like a very cool kind of scary place. That's where we're going to do our remote viewing. Uh, Alexandra, why, why did you pick that location for us? Well, I've never been there, mind you. Oh, really? Uh, nope. But uh, it doesn't mean I won't be. If I'm meant to be there, I'll be there. You know, I'm not. Uh, there's so many places to go, and and I'm not going to get to everything in my lifetime. I'm 49 years old. You know, but um, hey, me too. Congratulations. See, not quite 50. <laughs> That police, look at my hair. That looks like 49, right there. Dude, <laughs> let me tell you something. <laughs> Just diet, you know. You don't eat, but I you did know, for years. Kids, my wife won't let me do it anymore. Damn her! No, you know, now you blame her. I'm gonna tell her. Listen, you don't men and nowadays to women. Did you see the newest thing? Is they're letting they have the hair dye to make their hair go gray. So women that don't haven't lost their color can go and just make it gray. And I'm sitting here thinking, what the hell's wrong with you? Why do you <laughs> want that? What the fuck is wrong with you? Right. you want, I'll keep you mine. Have the gray. So, there you go. For free. But exactly. um I don't know, I lost my train of thought. Celebrity gray. Well, it's okay. Don't, don't yes. worry, I just cap oh, all the time. Mansion. Mansions, mansion. yeah. hair color, it all kind of blends together and, but it's, well, and now in, now. it's like and it's one of the isn't it the oldest house in Manhattan, I think? Or one or of them, yeah. It? So yeah. Being, you know, I grew up there. Um there are a lot of and this is everywhere, there's a lot of mansions and, and homes that are actually not what you think a mansion would be as, as far as the size of it. So in Manhattan, there's quite a few of them all the way up to Harlem and then down to the tip of Manhattan. And um, they all deal with, at some point, slave quarters and um, a family that owns it and runs it and then so on and so forth. And there's usually death, chaos, murder, deception, because they were living in a time that was very different. and um, this kind of was like the norm back then, if you will. So they're not very big. 
as far as what we think of what a mansion would be like. They're usually sure. a lot of them are like brownstones or like mini little colonials that are very grand because maybe they have columns in the front. Mm -hmm. um, but the reason I chose it is, well, number one, it's in Manhattan where I'm from. And number two, this was a place that my father did go to quite a few times. Um, and he really did put it on the map as well, kind of like with the Whaley House. And I'm very proud that he was able to do that for the story, for the history, for those that had passed there pleasantly and not pleasantly. Uh, it's, it's a part of history. And he was a, a, a movement of that history to put it out there for, for the masses to start to learn about it. And he did that. That was his work and his voice and his passion and his convictions. So I wanted to choose something that was our home base and something that I knew that he would have been proud to, to discuss and put That's more awesome. light on it. Perfect. Awesome. All right. Well, great. Well, so at this particular time, normally we'd be giving some shout outs, but I at least wanted to intentionally mention that this is actually pre-recorded. So we'll be in the chat, but we won't be able to actually give any shout outs live. But of Take, course, uh, for a live studio audience. Exactly. You know, or, uh, kind of, or, most, or mostly live in this case. I mean, you know, uh, it's, it's halvesies. Uh, but everyone be sure as we start the ride to, you know, keep your hands and feet inside the cart at all times. That's your public service announcement. And I'll hand it over to uh, your all right, so we're going to do this together, Alexandra. Um, jump in, interrupt, um, do whatever you got to do, direct me in a different direction if you want. Um, we're in this together, so let's see how this goes. Okay. <clears throat> um, Darren, why don't you kick us off? Okay, well, uh, just a brief history of it. Uh, it is considered one of Manhattan's uh, oldest homes, built back in 1765 by British Colonel Roger Morris for his family. It was nicknamed uh, Mount Morris. Uh, interesting history there that uh, during the Revolutionary War, it uh, fell uh, to, the, uh, to the American side, and George Washington was there with his Continental officers for a short um, period of time. Then he lost it uh, when the British took over New York. Uh, it was occupied by uh, British and Hessian armies. But if we fast forward to 1810, that's when the story gets interesting. It was when it was purchased by Eliza and Stephen Jamel. And there's a lot of interesting things that have happened uh, with that couple. And uh, Stephen tried to be a good businessman, had some issues. His wife was uh, very determined, uh, very successful. And let's just say that uh, poor, poor Stephen uh, had an incident where he allegedly fell on a pitchfork um, and, and bled to death um, because his wife, Eliza, might not have given him the aid that he needed. And of course, this is way back when, so stories are kind of, you know, eh, who knows. But supposedly, uh, Stephen is one of the people that haunts the home. Um, also, uh, there's a servant, I think, on the third floor, and Alexandra would probably know because during your father's work, I know during the seances he had, that um, supposedly uh, Stephen came through. And, I, I, of course, I saw the episode on, on Holzer Files that, I mean, it was pretty chilling what he described about what happened to himself. Yeah, you know, um, during his work there, he would work with the transmedium. So the transmedium basically is a tool and vessel for the dead, if you will, to speak. And that's how he worked in that vein. And so the medium would be able to transcribe uh, who was at the forefront of, this, of the said haunting. Now, there's more than one haunting the mansion, clearly, but the one that's got the most energy is going to come through to that transmedium to answer or to speak or to, to, to do whatever. Um, it's all that energy transfer. And so being that many need to be heard in this particular location, the strongest one would have come forward at the time. And that would begin that transcript of that conversation that you will find in those books that he wrote. Okay, so um, there's the, the, tell me, Darren, do you know when this was, did you say when this was built? Uh, 1765, um, so, and then George Washington uh, took it over in 1776. Okay, so th this is the fascinating part about this property that I'm being told, is that this, there is an, there, there has been an energy in that space that, has been kicking people out, if you will. So like this 
someone so like I heard you say so and so had it, then someone else had it, then someone else had it. And and even though you can, you know, make logic of why it was passed on to other people, there is an energy that that occupied this space, this land before the home was built, um, that lived in this home that was removing people from the home because there was like is it vacant right now? No, I think it's like a, a museum. Well, it's a um, museum. It's vacant. Yeah. No one's living in it. I don't think um, so. Um, so there is this energy that lived there first that was kind of like picking through who they they wanted to live there, even though ultimately they didn't want the house there at all, and they didn't want people living on that property. Um, it, so like a Native feels, American type I was thing? just going to say it feels okay. a little bit like a, a tribal experience um where there was and it wasn't just that there was ownership this isn't like um this isn't coming from a place of this is mine and not yours it was coming from well let me back up they're saying it was taken from us it was ours it we lived here and it was taken from us and that's why there is almost like i oh i never use this word but i almost want to use the word curse where that they did not want anybody they did not want this house built they did not want the property and and not that so and i hesitate to say curse because it, it feels a little it feels tribal i'm leaning towards native american not confirming that and i say that because this tribe is not about harming and hurting this tribe is not about scaring or revenge it was more about precedent it was more about we asked you not to do this we gave you what you wanted and you still did it so this is what happens now if you will um and this curse i use that word lightly isn't meant to harm and hurt it was meant to say we told you this was not yours so this is going to be uncomfortable for a while for a lot of you um well you know that that go goes but that that all parlays into a lot of places that are reportedly haunted and still occupied which is all over the world in a lot of different areas because what was the true history before the foundation was even built you know people lived on the land the native americans and settlers and other um, civilizations the land was their home and what they built on top of it became another structure and then as we got into creating these other homes with tools that we were able to build these with and so on and so forth, then, you know, X, Y, and Z moves in these elitist families with money and so forth. So I agree. I mean, there's layers there of history, which is why I said in the beginning of the show, the history, which is what my father always began with, there's a lot more there. And it's, it's still not clear as to why they're still feeling the need to stay there and who was there before them. And you've got multiple energies there. And I agree with her because um, the Native American Indians, and also when we talk about the Hessians, that also involves the Tartarians. And so there are other cultures and groups that have might have stayed behind, and as my father called them, the stay behinds as well, to to kind of still be there energy wise. And so a lot of it could be getting muddled up. And then you've got you know the Jumel Mansion and that whole family and that whole saga of of Stephen and being murdered by his wife. I mean, you've got all this stuff that just adds to what happened right. before. We're still not 100% clear on. We weren't there. It's not written in any books. But it True. doesn't mean other people weren't there and other things didn't happen in that one location on that parcel. Mm -hmm. Right. A house on top of something doesn't mean, oh, now it's haunted. Now, because right. people... And that's, that's the fascinating part, which I'm sure, Alexander, you've been told this before, but there's, you know, your... Um, your, I'm trying to find the word, like talent, your seed is this capability to bring everyone back to ground zero. Mm -hmm. And that's um, probably something you're already worked in and deal with, but that's what they keep referencing um, when my guides are referencing you um, joining in. It's you have the power, your ability is to bring us back to ground zero. So in all, so many situations in life, whether it's, they're saying whether it's like a basic day-to-day -day situation and you pull the truth out and you're like hang on this is what happened because right. you go to ground zero and you go no look at this but you have the uh, capability to bring us through history back to ground zero but to a ground zero 
because the, 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 the research you do combined with your intuition brings everyone back to ground zero. And you're like, no, this is why it looks this way. No one's looked at it like that before. So um, thank you for that, because that is my one of my purposes of why I'm continuing on the work. And it's very different. My, it's different than dad. But you know what? It's very much the same because he always wanted to find the truth, which is why he didn't believe Columbus discovered America. You know, I mean, the bottom line is and what you're picking up on is what's not really picked up on too much is what was here before the root of the problem the questions the answers all the information you have got to go back to ground zero and then even below it who was here before stop looking at the pretty mansion stop reading about the story and my father even dug for history and had he still been here he might have gone back and said i want to do this case 20 years later because the times would have been different the perceptions and information would have been filtered differently as he grew he would have definitely retackled this place and other places to say, wait a minute, maybe I got half of this wrong. Maybe I wasn't looking in the right place. A true investigator, researcher, medium, all of it has got to admit to the fact that sometimes when we touch on things, we're getting there, but we don't have the actual answer. Sometimes we have to keep digging and digging, which is why you go back to these places several times. And even over a span of years, because sometimes it takes years to get answers. It's right. We're in a microwave generation. We want it now, 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 now. Oh, it's got to be this. Okay, case closed. Absolutely not. There's and you know, there's there's all. I'm also being told there was a the 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 reason why there was this separation. And I know we'll get to the back to the mansion in just a minute. But the reason why there was this kind of uh, they're saying like separation or hesitancy to um uh, to latch on to your abilities your power, your intuition was because there was such, there was such an understanding in your family, whether I'm not sure if it was subconscious or conscious that it was so important that you grew into your um, power by yourself and that mm -hmm. your father specifically didn't want to influence you because he wanted you to be independent of him with, with the positive influence of him, but independent of him because you two are um, powerful beings, yet very separate beings um, that almost like he's saying came into the same family to be separate because the work that you are to do, you already understand, but it's so much, it, it, it takes his work from here to here, but it takes at the same time, I, they keep saying, like, it's so odd because they keep bringing me back to ground zero. It's like your dad's work went up here into the spirit world, but your work is going to actually bring us down to the very human world of ground zero, a fact, fact combined with spirit. So, um, I mean, you you know your dad's around in here, and he's very, he's right there. Like, he's just like, you know, I, it, this, I, I wanted, it was very important that that she came into her power on her own. She knew who she was. She determined who she was. She you know, looked in the mirror and saw her and knew, I am this. I can do this. I don't, no one's validating you other than you. That was really important. Um, so taking that and, and building on your mediumship, I want to say, because sometimes psychic ability is used um, you know, it's kind of loose, like, oh, I predicted an earthquake or whatever. But for you, there's this medium, you know, ship that is heavy and deep and um, and goes deeper you know, than I think you even realize. But yeah, and I thank you for that. And and this is why I don't know where I fit in, including having that show out there and everything. I, I am really hell bent on going in the opposite direction with the similar environment. In other words, what you've just said and what we've been trying to do over the years and what I've been trying to figure out and how to explain it and show it to the masses is the fact that there's different forms of tapping into information. There's different labels that we've given our names to clairvoyant, clairaudient. What does this mean? And that's very important because not everybody has the same ability. Some have more than one. Some have it and are not awakened to it until they pass from this life and have to come back and live it again to understand a little bit more of that lesson, reincarnation and so forth in your current incarnate of what you have not learned. It's all connected and it's, it's always moving. It's a cycle. It's energy. It doesn't just die. We don't die. We just don't. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I appreciate you saying that because I am very frustrated 
as a medium, it's not, I'm not a conventional traditional medium. I can see and then get impressions and I know and I can look through somebody and know right away if they're bullshitting me. And it's, yeah, people say, oh, you're just a good judge of character. Well, a lot of that mm -hmm. comes from your intuition. So if you're mm -hmm. a good judge of character, then your intuition is working, you know? There's, there is a, they keep referencing a bullseye that you, like they're saying you have, the reason why the struggle's been there um, and we can let Rick, we're sidetracking because you're going to edit this, right? right? Um, uh, there's a reason why um, they keep showing me a bullseye, okay? So you have, there's noise and struggle. And what do you do? What do you, what's your daily practice? Is it meditation? Is it yoga? What is it? It used to be years and years ago, yoga. And okay. Um, We've, but I stopped all that. It, uh, as far as meditation, what I have been doing in, in terms of is what is, would be close to that is a lot of ESP training and a lot of mind training and focus where I can really hone in on my environment 24 hours a day. Okay. So here's, here is, um, this is coming from me, Miriam, the human, not the medium. <laughs> I, I would, um, strongly encourage you to research Guru Singh Kundalini Yoga as taught by Yogi Bhajan. Um, Kundalini Yoga is going to give you, it's going to, it's a science that will strengthen and pull out your in, intuition, your mediumship, and then it's going to give you the physicality to rise above the noise. So for you and I, our noise is psychic and our noise is everyone else's noise, right? Um, and so on top of that, you have children. And so your noise is expounded even more. So mm -hmm. what Kundalini Yoga does is it lifts you above the noise, okay? And then it expands your intuition, but it grounds you as a physical human. And they're saying that the that's what you... They, there's a bullseye they're wanting you to hit. There's a target they're wanting you to hit. Okay, like I've got I've got your dad who's like like right here having a drink, and then I've got your um, guides. Okay, so like here are your guides and here's your dad. And and to be fair, I I I don't do research. Of course, I understood who your father was, but I didn't anticipate him coming through. But he's he's through. So we got him and we got these two guys and there's this bullseye they want you to hit. There's this mark they want you to hit. And that's where this struggle came in because um, the struggle is creating this get and it's the struggle is bringing you closer to this bullseye, this mark. And the mark is who you are and why you're here. And this is only for you to determine. Kundalini yoga will give you that. Now I'm going to, uh, I'll send you the link, but then of okay. course, your daily practice is yours. So it's going to be whatever suits you, not what anyone else tells you. It's going to give you a path. It's either going to lead you down the path and you're going to jump on it, or it's going to lead you to where you're supposed to be with your daily practice. Right. You have to rise above the noise, they're saying. You're getting caught up in the noise. You're getting caught <laughs> up. And in, in even though you have the capability, like you have this ability to kind of pick apart your brain and go, I know that's there. I know that's there. I know that's there. Mm -hmm. And I know I'm here. Something that a lot of us did in meditation to achieve. You have that capability even without a daily practice, but a daily practice is going to have you sit in it without you having to pick it apart. You'll just be able to see it and you'll just go, oh, okay, I'm going to go here. I'm going to go there. Whereas right now you are having to go, okay, there's this and there's that and there's this and there's that and there's that. And they're saying, no, we want it to just be this, not part that you have to piece apart because it's adding to the struggle and the work and the this and the that. There's no need for that. You are this vessel, this antenna. You just, you're right now, your antenna is kind of splayed out into many, many directions and they want it to go like this mm -hmm. and then they want it to point at your bullseye. And I'm not telling you the bullseye, not because I know and I'm not, because they're not telling me because it's for you to find. Because mm -hmm. once you hit it, you'll just be like, ah, that's what it is. That's why all the struggle. Because really, this is what this is all supposed to look like for me. And this is how the world is supposed to see me. 
So the struggle has actually been a protective barrier that your guides and your father have set up so that you don't put yourself out there and then go, ah, I kind of wanted it to look like this. They're like, nope, we want her to gather it together and mm -hmm. then do it. And so that's where you're at the gathering stage now. And they're saying that you're also, you have three kids? Uh, no, I have um, five and one stepson, so it's six. Okay. So they're saying that, that now there's you're getting to a point to where you can separate a little bit from the kids and you can start to really make this about you. I'm not saying separate physically. You know what I'm saying. It's just kind yeah. of finding yourself like that typical at your age, all women do it, right? Oh, yeah. Um, but, but it's going to be a little bit different for you. It's going to feel different and look different for you. So um, the struggle has been there as a barrier, as a protective barrier. Now that you shift your thinking to understand that that's what it's been, you can go, ah, thank you. Okay, now what? Now we're gonna go over here. And it's like, I want you to even in your, your daily practice that you're gonna start, I want you to even kind of sit differently. Um, and even just, they're saying, cause they want you to literally shift yourself over here and go, okay, this is what this is. You're here. And you need to just go like this. Uh -huh. That's it. Because your bullseye's right there. Okay. Right. It's not here, it's here. And so in order for you to go here, they need to pull you away. You need to pull yourself away from the noise. You need to you'll be able to snap into that fast, like they were right. saying. You pull into it, boom, the antenna comes out, it shoots, it points, there's your bullseye. This shouldn't take more than six months, they're saying, where you'll start to see a serious turnaround where there's this sense of feeling like in um, quicksand and then boom, this is about to open up and shift. So six, about six months from now is when you're going to see that as, as long as you put, you apply this, you'll see this, um, you'll navigate through, um, take that struggle, thank it. Cause thank God for it. You're going to, in about six months, you're going to be like, Oh my God, thank God that was there. Um, and you'll be able to go where, where you want to go. Thank you for that. And I love you for that. That's, that's beautiful. And I have, I have no doubt. I mean, I, I've already noticed things have been changing already, but I, I you know, it's not going to be public information or anything. It's mm -hmm. just not, it, you know, sometimes things are not needed to be said to, to be, you know, Oh, showing off or look at me. I've got this going on right now. It, it's nobody's business until there, there needs to be an announcement. My mm -hmm. whole thing is, you know, the work behind the scenes is really what's important. The announcements and press releases and whatever you know is is the aftermath of the business so to speak of getting it out there but my focal point is keeping everything private at this point and quiet as we do the work and that's the proper way and and, and the holster family anyway including with my mother and stuff to just keep it on the down low because you're going to lose track and the energies are going to go in the wrong places and you're doing it for the wrong reasons which equals vanity which i cannot absolutely stand it is mm -hmm. it's at its height because of social media over the years and albeit it has its upsides it has more downsides lately than anything else in my opinion and i think we need to go back to being old school and reading and studying and what you've just said is is very important my mother used to always do yoga so i do agree with you in that and i will look that up um but you have to definitely send me the link because i'll forget because like mm -hmm. i said I'm, <laughs> I'm a half a century old y'all so um but, and, and it goes back to with Jamal, uh, Jamal Mansion, you know, we could sit there and we could say, okay, we know what ghost is still residing there. And anybody can really go then run a preliminary and spend, you know, days and days mm -hmm. back and forth and get evidence and communication with whoever is still choosing to be there. However, my mindset is, yeah, but who was there before? <laughs> like, I and, already and know all that stuff. Anybody can really do that with, with good equipment, a really good medium in tow, a parapsychologist, a scientist. A psychologist if you really want to do it come on now guys let's get everybody on the team shall we it was, what was so cool with your energy alexandra was um how you brought me all all you brought me like all the way to to the root like you brought me to the root and i was like because i kept um as soon as i connected to it i kept um hearing go to go to pre 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 and so i was like bypassing all this stuff and then it was just like the seed. And that was what we, mm -hmm. they referenced about you was this capability yeah. to, to bring us to the seed that, and so I'm doing something, what I'm doing is the same thing that you do. You're going to just do it bigger and better. 
Um, and I think that um, starting with this home, this fascinating thing about this home is the way that it, um, you, you're so right. Like it, it's almost, it's so fascinating because had pre all the shows we've done prior to you, you know, I, I just, you know, I just kind of grab it. Like we always laugh because I gravitate towards light, but then I would gravitate towards the loudest demon kind of like, who's the loudest and who's, and, and just not because I meant to, but because they're in your face, which is, but then as you're, I've been exchanging energy with you, it's like, oh, wow, actually move him out of the way. He's just a loud noisemaker because what's behind that is some ugly, ugly stuff. And that's what you brought out with this home was like, Okay, yeah, like as soon as we we jumped in, I hear Eliza say, I didn't do it, I didn't kill him. And I'm like, okay. And then, yeah, Steven's there and he's a martyr and he's upset and he's this and he's mad, blah, blah. But then some your energy kept saying, no, move, move, move. And so I was, I was like, oh, interesting. I'm going to go around these people all the way down to the land before the house was built. And yep. then that's where it all started. So it's, you know, it's the surface fascinating. Stuff. It's like in life when we're when we're of the living, um, we have drama in our life and, and there's mistakes that are made and there's hardships and then there's positive moments and there's upheavals and then there's again positive moments. You know, it's a roller coaster ride in every generation and every century. This is how it goes. And as the, the, the times change and um, we're supposed to evolve, I think we've de-evolved, okay? We are the mm -hmm. hobbits of this generation. People need to wake the fuck up and understand. A lot of these places are haunted, yeah, so big deal. There is more going on at the root that came before the said haunting, which was caused by death. In whatever mm -hmm. manner, you know, form, fashion, it doesn't matter. Death can create the impression of life, sticking around without the physical which is what a ghost is and how do we deal with that do we want to deal with that can we help them cross over do they want to cross over it's it, this is there's too many variables you know a haunting is very complex and sometimes you can get to the root of it but you're still not going to really resolve it unless they choose to be resolved meaning those that are still hanging about now mm -hmm. if you want to stay and hang about because that was your home and you don't want to leave that that you still you know free will exists for us it also exists for them and they choose to, to stay within the entrapment of their environment because it's what's comfortable and familiar even in the afterlife and that is their right it's not anybody's business to force anybody or to bait them to come out you know you don't that that's all such crap you know and these places look at this i mean this structure there was probably you don't know could have been a massive structure attached to it we have defiled so many beautiful buildings and homes with columns and doors that fit are fit for giants mind you that have walked this earth not that long ago and probably still do exist the bottom line is they leave impressions as well like a human being they are of the living are they not are they not part of life and nature nature is life and living that creates energy energy leaves behind impressions once it is absolved from its physical self haunted places and people and things are not simple because there's more to the story that meets the eye. And the bottom line is sometimes we get information rather quickly and well, and we think, ah, all right. But I am not convinced until we have done everything possible, like in, in an ex excavation to build up, to bring up the skeleton and be like, oh my God, this is a 20 foot man. You know what right. I'm saying? Um, then you see what you see and then you do the carbon dating and then you go through the science of it. To, you have to prove it. Uh, it's there, it's real. What does that mean now? How do I fit into society? What was I taught growing up? It's all bullshit. Hauntings are so complex, and my father was working on that, and which is why he wrote books on history of where we are. You know, I don't speak to a lot of mediums. Um, I've had enough emails over the years and letters and all sorts of inquiries and things and people saying, oh, I spoke to your father. I'm like, go away. You know what I'm saying? It's like I speak to him. I'm, I'm sure. saying that he doesn't go to other people, but I, I know – I know him intimately and I know his voice and it, there's just certain characteristics. And so like in mediumship, there's just things that we know. And mm -hmm. it's just like, I'm telling you this, this is, this is who this person is. Um, I don't have a name, but I'm telling you, go for you. Oh my God, that describes so-and-so. I'm like, well, then there it is. I said, how would I know? I don't know these people. But when it, it's your own family, it's very, to me, insulting when other people try to come through. And this is going back 10 years 
where I'd get, you know, letters and stuff, you know, a year after he died. And I'm just like, just please, thank you, but leave me alone. Mm -hmm. Honestly, would you like it if I did that to you and said, oh, your mom's here? You know, mm -hmm. like if, if, if she Very really creepy. is and I have something to say, I'll write to you and you can take it for what it is. But some of them are mm -hmm. so pushy and aggressive. And it's I like, can imagine. But what are you trying to prove? If you're, if you're, if you have abilities and you think you've spoken to him, then tell me something that I would, I would know that it's really him. Really mm -hmm. impress me because there's so much surface stuff anybody could say. Don't forget, you can look up online who he was. Oh well, yeah. So it's like, come on, you know. But this, this whole thing about, you know, everybody has the ability. We all know this. We have our sixth sense, but half of us are either awake or sleeping. And we'll look at your male mansion and we say, okay, well, we, we know what my father did there. We know what was found there. We know what other groups have found there and, and stuff. Everybody's going to have either similar experiences, the same or different or nothing. Mm -hmm. It really depends on the energies there. If they're going to come through and want to communicate or not, you can't just have a ghost on demand and say, well, I'm filming. So right. I'm go up. <laughs> That's right. Get my here. Get your shit well, together. What is it? Is there anything? Is, is there something specific that you would like to know or look at or feel right now with Jamel Mansion? Is there something you've wondered or yeah. anything? Yes, I, I really, I want to know who, who was, who was residing in that space in that environment along with the madam. And uh, hopefully Stevens moved on since then. Um, I want to know who's there that was not of that period of time that have died there. I want to know who was there before. Were they were they um, a Native American with their tribe? Was there um, people setting up camp in that area on that land with you know a different background so to speak Who, who's there now who's still lingering there that is intermingling with the storyline of what we all know to be famous today okay so we're gonna go back to that tribe and i'm just right now gonna reference them as a tribe until i get really clear on if if i get really clear on who they are and, and what they were about but um so what happened is they there's okay, so this 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 tribe that originated there, um, they're taking me all the way back to like like pre like cowboy Indian and even beyond then. Um, they were living peacefully. Uh, the white man came in and took from them and said, you know, we now want this, and they tried to negotiate and they couldn't uh, because the white man refused and so um th again they're wanting me to say we don't curse so it wasn't that we wished ill on them we simply stated you took something that you weren't supposed to take and so um the energies though that speak through are disgruntled people that live in body in the home so there's this other layer this indian tribe that started there and they don't speak through these this technology they are the ones that were simply pushing people out um and not conscious they, it's hard to describe because i mean you would understand it alexandra because they're not they're you, it's not like a human saying get out this is mine it was simply this was never anyone else's to have. And so there's like this bubble around it that people keep bouncing up against, you know, and that bubble might allow you to live in it for a period of time, but then you're bumped out um, because it was never supposed to have gone down this way. Um, and so you have, you know, who speaks, who is the loudest and who has portrayed herself in other forms is the wife. What's her name? Liza? Yeah, Liza. Yeah, Eliza, Eliza, yeah. yeah. Strong, strong personality in life and in the afterlife. She was uh, really used to being in charge of everything. Um, for a woman during that time, was was really not very uh, normal because it's you know it's 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 kind of like the role reversal back then versus today. Obviously, it's different, but 
you know, uh, like my grandmother, my father's mother, Marta, had to sit in the back of the tailor shop that my grandfather owned when they came to America and they were in Hoboken, New Jersey. Um, and uh, she was told to sit in the back of the shop because as a woman, you weren't allowed to be in the front of the business place. The men were allowed. They ran it and so forth. In this situation, she ran things. She was yeah, very she tough. In a lot of ways, she was very masculine, you know, and um, had much conviction and, and arrogance to her. Um, so I, I often wonder if, if she was influenced by another energy in that house that we don't know about or really touched upon, which goes back to what we're talking about now. Who was her influencer to do the things that she did, which were absolutely horrible? She was so scheming, Liza, and, and, scheming yeah. and, and she was uh, everything that you've already alluded to, but she's the one that speaks the loudest and comes through. Um, she actually will even portray herself as Steven because Stephen, he's definitely has passed on, but there's a part of his soul that still will jump into conversations like these because he is so disgruntled and he is so upset about what happened and how it happened. And um, those two have not made any peace amongst each other by any means. And so that's a, another life lesson for them. Liza's scared to move on because she knows she's done so much damage that she doesn't want to face it so she's choosing to stay um and she's choosing to just simply communicate with everyone the way she is because she's avoiding where she needs to go because of that that isn't something or someone that we are to deal with or pass over that's between her and spirit or God or whatever you believe. So Alexandra, I have to ask the question that I, I usually toss out at this time would be, so with this experience, and obviously you've been on multiple shows, um, did you have something a little different today? A little unique? This is very different. This I've never done this before. Um, and I love it because everybody's working together, sharing uh, energy and respect to the cause of unearthing layers of what everybody's fascinated with which is why they watch these shows what which is why they ask questions or even pick up an actual book and read it you know um is because people want to understand and the and the start of understanding is you need to know who you are and where you come from and what does that mean and are you going to believe what was written in books and forced uh down your throat so to speak that this is history this is fact this is truth because i said so if you can get one person to change their action and behavior through an interview like this, which is something I've never done before, I think it's great. It shows that we all can be in tune with each other. We can be respectful and connected, and we can ask and push that envelope. Now, listen, you're going to have people who are going to accept things for what they are, and they'll never change on that. And that's what I call walking in you know, the river of denial in Egypt. That's fine. Go about your day and, and pass that way. And then there are others that are waking up and saying, well, wait a minute, this doesn't make sense. Why doesn't it make sense? And just because you don't have all the answers right away, don't get frustrated. You know, there are other people out there that are working hard and putting out videos and information for people to learn and ask their, their questions and be independent free thinkers, which is what I feel that I've become over the years. And I've had less tolerance and patience for the arrogance that I keep seeing more and more. And when you're dealing with hauntings and famous places like this, even though the dad helped put it on the map is irrelevant. He wasn't there to do that. He was there because he heard of the story through a friend of his in Manhattan, which is where we lived and grew up and went and checked it out. You know, he didn't have the internet back then. He, he didn't have any of that. It was word of mouth, colleague to mm -hmm. colleague, referral to referral. And then you, you unraveled from there, but had he still been here today, he would have definitely gone back to a lot of these places and dug even further deeper to the history not so much about the haunting because part of the haunting is the history because it can still parlay into the current person like eliza that could be um influencing her um behavior even in right. the afterlife yes yes well right. so thank you for the opportunity and thank you guys and especially marianne thank yes you. thank you for continuing your father's work and for obviously yeah, uh, continuing your own work there for sure thank you and for joining us Hey, don't go anywhere. Uh, for everybody else, thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next week.